So it seems to me to be almost impossible to think that that could be an accidental relationship. The new covenant in the land of Damascus and the new covenant uh, in my blood and so on and so forth. I don't want to go further than that. So I think that there is a relationship going on there. I'm not sure what it is, which is why I speak about the New Testament code in this book. That there is, I don't mean by that actual word for word code, but there are words, trip words, that are being used in both contexts uh, that are being changed and altered in one context as opposed to the other context. So that we have uh, two contexts, one basically very much law-oriented or mosaic law-oriented or Torah-oriented or whatever you want to call it, and the other, the opposite, antinomian is what the word is. We've never heard of that. Antinomian means, I think uh, in Greek, or the Latin, nomos is, uh, is law. So antinomian is against the law, unlawful, or not, not caring about the law, saved not by the law, but by faith, if you want to call it that, as the Pauline presentation, which our Gospels reflect. <coughs> So what I was trying to say after all that is that the Gospels, to my mind, are thoroughly Paulinized. Now whether they're accurate or not is for you or the believer to decide or the observer to decide, I can't say. Each person has to determine that himself, like a, a jury, if you care about studying things. You just don't take words and authority. Now, 400 years ago, you'd be burned for saying things like this, just like you'd be beheaded in Islam. You know, we've only had our civil rights protected for the last 250 years. So don't think that, you know, just because it wasn't said 500 or 1,000 years ago that that, that, that doesn't invalidate it. Nobody could say these things 500 or 1,000 years ago. They'd be, they'd be burned, like Joan of Arc. How would you like to be burned for nothing? You know, and actually out there, you know, auto to say, someone reports you and you're actually literally burned, alive. You know, that can really uh, put a little bit of fear in you <laughs> for actually saying anything. And, you know, Galileo was, as you probably know, put under uh, house arrest because they were going to burn him, but he said, oh, well, okay, I'll just recant and, you know, just leave me alone. My daughter will take care of me. Uh, just let me, just let, just, just let me, uh, you know, not, not go through that. You know, Savonarola, one of the monks who was burning everyone previously in the previous generation, was burned in the square of Florence in the 1500s. And there were people burned in England in the 1600s. So, you know, this is really near that you can think without someone, you know, you can watch Madonna go to Jerusalem and put a red thread around her, you know, uh, navel or wherever she puts it. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, do all the things that you guys are able to do. So it's nice to be able to exercise your brain. So in any case, as far as the Gospels go, I don't know anything about the historical Jesus. Nobody's agreed on who and what he was. No one's sure. No one's sure which testimonies are accurate, but I'll tell you what isn't accurate. He didn't spit in someone's mouth and cure that person from being deaf and dumb. And he didn't spit in someone's eyes or ears or anything like that. And, and he didn't say uh, that, you know, that you shouldn't wash your hands before eating, that that's a stupid superstition to wash your hands before eating. You say, did he say that? He says it. He's made to say it. Not my Jesus. He didn't say those things. So if your Jesus said that, that's cool. And you can tell your minister, Eisenman said this, is it saying you know, and, and he'll go, oh, <laughs> you know, he probably didn't mean, it's in the scripture. And I, you know, I, 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 if you read my book, you'll find the actual quotes and so on laid out there really carefully. And I don't, I don't, I'm going to be severe on that. You know, I'm not, the Jesus of history, to my mind, wouldn't have said such absurd things. And, you know, he didn't take uh, uh, people uh, with evil spirits and there was a herd of swine and he threw the evil spirits in the herd of swine. That's Hellenistic superstition. That's Hellenistic novelization. I know it's painful. I know it's painful. I know it's hurtful. 
that's poetry is truer than history. That's the poetry of the time. You say, what is history? Maybe he did. Not mine. Maybe yours did, or someone else did. But you know, he, uh, you know, he, 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 this person had to be better than that. Had to have been better than that. He had to be really pretty perfect. I don't think he walked on waters either. You know, these are all Hellenistic superstitions that people had to do signs and wonders to be impressive. This is what the poets put in their literature. Now you can say, uh, how do you know this? How do you know this? You weren't there. Well, neither were you, and neither were the people that wrote it. So, you know, uh, the, the person who, the person, uh, Jesus of, of history, it's got to be someone really importantly, uh, you know, without too many flaws. And so I wouldn't ascribe human flaws to that person. Stuff that was uh, put on him by writers who had uh, either prejudice or something like that. So that's what I mean about apocrypha. Let me finish what I'm saying. I don't want to get an argument about this at the moment. I'm just putting my point. I want to get, we'll have plenty of time to argue about Jesus later. I just later. want to ask the question. Let me finish the point, then. Let me finish the point. So this is what I mean by apocrypha. You know, everything is apocrypha. Everything is pseudepigraphic unless it's proven otherwise. So Enoch is pseudepigraphic. Um, Mark is pseudepigraphic. Matthew is pseudepigraphic. John is pseudepigraphic. Uh, Thomas is pseudepigraphic. The Gospel of Judas is pseudepigraphic. Unless you prove otherwise, the pseudo-Clementines are, are, are probably not pseudepigraphic, though they're called pseudepigraphic. In other words, someone called Clement probably wrote them and so on. Hey, what's your question? Uh, I was going to ask, uh, uh, since uh, if you can believe what you said. You believe whatever you want. Uh, yeah, Don't believe what I said. But, my question is that you know, you are an expert. Did Moses of history walk past the uh, Red Sea? Of course not. Okay. People don't see that. I mean, there weren't two walls of water on either side. That's the memory, folk memory of the people. Something happened. Something impressive happened. Something went down in the poetry. But is it exaggerated like the poets? I don't want to be unfair and say the Old Testament is full of truth and the New Testament isn't. I told you the Quran has these defects. The, the Old Testament has these defects. All poetry has these defects. You think Achilles was put in the water by a god and that he was impervious to any, uh, to any sort of wound or anything except on his heel where the god was holding his heel so Paris could only shoot him in the heel to kill him? You see, you're not bothered by that. Because it's not something you, that you believe in. It's not your 